Hello, my name is Jake, and I'm going to go over the spike motion sensor, specifically the gyro, the gyroscope on it. So the gyroscope allows you to figure out, uh, measure rotation on the robot in three different axes, yaw, pitch, and roll. So on, on the robot, when you have the brick laid out like this, yaw is rotation in this axis, pitch is rotation in this axis, and roll is rotation in this axis. Now, for first Lego League, assuming you have your brick mounted like this, you will almost only, it's highly likely that you will only ever need to use yaw because that will be turning like so, and that's the main direction that you steer your robot. So I have a program here that I have in, that I have input a certain number of degrees and that gets the robot to turn exactly that amount. So here's what it looks like for 30 degrees. And then here is what it looks like for 90 degrees. And now I will show you the cup. And now I'm going to go over the code for the demo you just saw. So first, starting from the top, we have these two lines. These two lines are um, importing various modules into the code that runs the robot. Now, the exact way that these lines work isn't that important, but what you do need to know is that if there's something about the, the spike robot that you want to use, be it uh, make sure you have access to the motors or a certain sensor, you have to make sure that it is imported up here like so. However, often the uh, Spike software will automatically generate these lines for you, so you don't have to worry too much about that. So now let's get into more of the meat of the, the code. Um, here we have to do some initializations to set up the motors. Um, we use this syntax, this big motor, to say that we're creating a motor object and that this motor is specifically referring, is referring to the motor plugged into port C. And then over here, we are naming this motor left. Now, you don't need to name them left and right. I do that so it's easy for me to remember that this is the motor that's controlling the left set motor and this is the one controlling the right. But these could be named anything. So we have our left motor, which we know is going to be plugged into port C in our right motor, which we know is going to be plugged into port D. Now we also want to tell the robot how much we want it to turn. Here I have it set for 90. I could also just change this number to 30 to make it 30. Um, this is mostly just an input, a static input into the program. Um, yeah. And then next we actually have to initialize the gyro. Now this is not important for this in particular piece of software since it, we're only turning once and whenever you start the robot it's zero the initial angle is always going to be zero but if you were to say use this twice in a row without restarting the program you would need to make sure that you that you get whatever angle you're currently at to set that as your effective zero um, because if I turn 30 degrees and then I say that I that I want to turn until I'm at 30 degrees again, it's not going to turn at all because it's already hit that point. It, it, it doesn't re automatically reset for you. So here I get my initial angle, and then here I set my current angle to my initial angle because we're at the start of the program, I haven't moved anything, so I'm currently facing the way I started facing. Now we finally turn. So, um... To do this, we use a while loop, so that way we are going to be turning while this statement here is true. And what we're saying is we want to make sure that our current yaw minus our initial yaw, so our current angle that we've turned minus the initial amount that we've turned, is less than the amount that we want to turn. So while this is true, that means we're going to keep turning. Um, and here we want to update current yaw, because just because we call it current, doesn't mean that it's always, we have to explicitly update the variable so that way it always has the most recent value. So we use hub to access the robot hub, same as what we did up here to get the motion sensor to get the actual angle itself. Um, so you go motion sensor and then you use get yaw angle. And now I, I mentioned earlier that there's, that there's other um, axes that the robot can rotate around like roll and pitch. You can see all the different ways that you can access um, and all the different things you can do 
with the motion sensor by going over to the knowledge base here and clicking on the motion sensor drop down where we have um, these things that uh, look for gestures and then we have all of the um, all of the angle and uh, angle measurements that we would want to use. And then if we want to get details about that, we would click on one, and then it gives us even more details over here, as well as how to like set up the how to set everything up and access it. So if there's more that you would want to do um, than just necessarily get your yaw, then you can look over at the knowledge base to see how you'd want to do that. But now getting back to the code. We have, after we get update our current yaw, we have this print statement here. Now this print statement isn't necessary to actually uh, turn the ro robot. It's there to help you debug in case the robot isn't doing what you want it to do. You want to get some sort of output to understand what the robot thinks it's doing um, and why that isn't matching your expectation. When you get print statements, it will appear down here in this little drop down. I haven't run any code, so it's all empty right now. Um, but yeah, you, this is useful for when it's useful to have print statements like this to make sure that you understand what your code is doing in case um, something goes wrong. And then lastly, here we are starting our motors to actually get them to turn. Uh, we specifically use this start at power function um, because a lot of the time when you want to move a motor, if you have a specific distance you want it to turn, you don't want you want it to just move you want the rotor to just move for a certain number of rotations or degrees but here we want it to move until we've reached a, a certain condition so we just want to set a speed so to do that we use the start at power function which we use to set the speed to negative 30. now these are both set to negative 30 because of the specific um way that my robot is set up such it's set up such that the left motor and the right motor are kind of going in opposite directions of each other so on a normal robot setup, one of these two values would be positive and the other one would be negative to make sure that one motor is going forwards and the other one is going backwards. But my robot is set up strangely, so that's not the case here. And then lastly, since all that we've done, done is set a speed, we haven't told it how far we want to go for. So we have to explicitly tell the robot when to stop. So when we have hit our uh, condition, we know we have turned the amount that we want to turn, we then turn off the motors explicitly by setting both of them to have power zero. And that's all the code for the gyro demo that I just showed you before. It's fairly straightforward, um, it, but if you want to learn more or get more details about the functions that I'm using, again, the knowledge base is always available over here for you to look at. It's very handy. It has, it has a lot of detailed information about um, exactly how certain functions work. And hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.